Hey there, friends, and welcome back to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. Today on the podcast, we are going to be talking a little bit about setting ourselves up for success as we get ready for this upcoming holiday season. Something as simple as having all our marketing assets in order, looking and feeling really good can make our day-to-day easier and so much more efficient, right? We all need that. One simple and important part of our business is consistent and easy branding. And I see that over and over again with shop owners that it's kind of all over the place. And I'm guilty of that as well, too. So we are going to introduce you today to our guest, Brenda Cadman. She is a rare expert. She's only one of 25 North American verified global Canva experts. She's taught thousands of small business owners how to use Canva And one thing she's really good at and she loves to do is help small business owners get organized and conquer their hot mess Canva accounts. And truthfully, that's what I am in the middle of right now, (laughs) cleaning up my hot mess Canva accounts. Uh, She is so good at this. Brenda was a guest inside my inner circle. We had her in as a guest teacher and she helped my members so much around the importance of using consistent branding tools, how to simplify their templates, how to set them up, how to even create templates and be efficient with them and how to really present themselves well along with how to master organizing that hot mess. And again, mine was such a mess and it's getting better every day. So whether you're using Canva or not, whether you're just dabbling in it, whether you've heard about it, I really believe it's a powerful tool for all of us. We just didn't have these tools. When I first started my very first business, we just didn't have these kind of tools and used to have to hire people. So instead of getting overwhelmed with Canva and how to use it and all the tech and all the, you know, pieces that could could happen, I wanted to bring Brenda on today to help us sort through that and sort of clear the mud and the muck and all the things that go with what we might think about Canva or how we're using it and get super efficient so that we can stay super professional. She's going to share some great tips or she does share some great tips along with five simple steps, actionable steps that are going to help you get the most out of Canva. So without further ado, let's jump in today's show with Brenda Cadman. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple, proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers, and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. So hey there, friends. I have a special guest for you here today. I'm so excited to introduce you to uh, my friend and expert Canva. Well, what are you? A global Canva expert. Verified Verified global Canva <laughs> it's expert. It's a mouthful. <laughs> Brenda Cadman is here with us today on the podcast, and I'm so excited to have you here. Brenda, thanks for being here. Oh, I'm happy to be here. So let's jump right in. Let's let's tell people what is a, uh, I had to write it down, a verified, verified global, global Canva. Canva. Yeah, we what is are your title? asking them, can we just shorten that to like like verified expert or something. It, it is a mouthful. I will admit that, but they're trying to differentiate us in some way in any case. Um, so I am one of only 25 in the world right now that will change. I'm under no illusions that it will stay that way. But at this point, there are 25 of us worldwide that have that title. It basically is a program that we were selected by Canva's community managers based on the kind of content and education that we do. So all of us kind of have different expertises as far as what we teach. Some are extremely successful YouTube hosts. Others train primarily in person, although they've had to, you know, pivot a little bit in the last couple of years for that. But all of us focus on teaching Canva in in some shape or form. And uh, yeah, we were chosen to be the first 25. So tell, can you tell our audience a little bit about 
how did you end up becoming <laughs> a global cannabis? Expert? Yeah. So get a little bit well, about your journey and what do you do? Who, who are you and what do you do? That's what we, I'd love to love all for those you to share things. with people. Yeah. And it's a over 22 year journey. So I won't go right. into the minutia of that because we don't have mm. time. Um, but I did start my first business back in January, 2000. And most of my entrepreneurial kind of career has been as a website development agency owner. And there's, there's been variations throughout the years. I also had a professional organizing business for about a year, year and a half. And that was interesting. I really enjoyed that. That really, you know, embraces my love of organization, but I, as things happen, you through the years, you your businesses changes a little bit. You meet new people, you take on staff members. And in 2013, my then business partner and I, we had been running a digital marketing agency and decided that we were, it was just time to do something different. We were going to go our separate ways. I continued on with website development. I took along one of our former employees to continue on as a freelance graphic designer. And then it got to a point where she didn't want to freelance anymore. And she wanted to go back to a, a full-time job. So in that moment, I have to find somebody new, but I need a solution then to create social media content. So this is 2014. And there was this new program people were talking about called Canva. So I started experimenting with it making all the mistakes that I tell people not to make now. And when the time came to actually hire a new graphic designer, I did still hire that person for, you know, the really key central branding stuff that I needed done. But I had really discovered that I loved using this tool and it gave me a flexibility that I didn't have working with somebody else, relying on somebody else to be able to create content for my business on the fly. So I just continued to use it throughout the years and come along 2019, I'm in a program. I'm looking to create a course about websites at that point. And all of my fellow course takers are asking all these questions about Canva, which I'm very comfortable using. So I start answering questions. I start creating little mini trainings to show them how to use the program to create their course materials. And they all start asking if my course is going to be about Canva. And that's kind of <laughs> one of those watershed moments where it's like, well, it is now. <laughs> and that was a real fork in the road. Um, I had not even considered it up until that point because I was just so used to using it that I never really realized that this was something I had an expertise in that other people didn't have. So still run the website agency. It has been downscaled dramatically so that I can increasingly focus just on the Canva side of things. Yeah. And you're so good. It's so funny. Um, but you, that's an example of how a lot of us become not accidental entrepreneurs, but the self-employed life is seeing a need and filling it. And we have a exactly. lot of retailers listening, a lot of shop owners listening that just sort of started with one thing and it's kind of grown and morphed into this passion project or, you know, people, and we do take things for granted sometimes. We could be like, I find this really easy and okay, I'll teach you how to right. paint or I'll teach you about books or, you know, and then it becomes a store. So it, I love that. I love that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that part of your journey, but Brenda, yeah. it was in our inner circle. Brenda did a course inside the retailers inner circle, uh, did a masterclass for us in there. And I will tell you, and I just told Brenda before we jumped on that the, the conversation around that after the class was wonderful because it really was, it was so helpful. A lot of us describe our Canva as a hot mess. I do. I do. It was a hot <laughs> mess. And so yeah. uh, it was so helpful. Your training inside my inner circle was amazing. And we've done lots of changes since then. We've we're, we're even adding Canva templates and stuff to help our retailers, but oh, um, there's so much, not mystery around Canva. It's like a lot of people just like, oh, we're just creating some Canva graphics for social media, but it's a really powerful tool for a lot of yeah. other things. This is why I wanted you to come on today and chat with us. A couple of things we're going to talk about today. Hopefully you can help us with one is taming the hot mess a little bit. I know you're so good at that. And that's a really big part of Canva. And even when you have team members and stuff, just having that all organized, but can you speak a little bit to why, like, why do we even care about having like the templates and the branding and all of that? I mean, to me, that's a huge part of what Canva does well. And we'll talk maybe a little bit about different ways that we can use Canva other than just social media, but 
about around the branding side of it, how can Canva help me look better besides just giving me pretty graphics? And it is something that can be very overwhelming because you, it does give you so much. You have this enormous stock library of photos and videos and audio and, you know, illustrations and icons and all these colors and all these fonts, sky's the limit is the limit as far as what you can create. But as a result, it, it's very easy to get distracted. It's very easy to create distracted looking marketing assets for your business. If you are dabbling with all of these different uh, options that are available to you. So I think one of the most central features that Canva provides, it is only on the pro level plan. It's mm -hmm. one of the very biggest reasons I think that it's worth upgrading. That is their brand kit feature, because it is important to put your branding, your visual brand assets into Canva and then really consistently use them. You know, don't get distracted by the three gazillion images and colors and fonts that you could, could be using. You need to set that up and consistently use it when you are customizing your templates, when you are creating your social graphics or your various other materials that you're creating. Because if you don't do that, what's going to happen is you're going to create a lot of confusion for your audience. You want to be that business. You want to be that retailer who, if they are following you on Instagram, when they see a promotional graphic from you, they know it's from you before they even see your name on it. You want that recognition because that recognition breeds it breeds trust and you need to have trust for the, for customers to be loyal to you. So if you are changing it up constantly, I, I have seen some uh, business owners, I've seen retailers do this where every graphic is, you know, it's a different color palette. It's a different set of fun and crazy fonts. And not only is it a different set of fonts, it is a lot of different fonts in a single graphic and it's overwhelming and it's confusing and it is not creating that consistency and that trust that we're all trying to create with our customers. So I think you setting up and using that brand kit is incredibly important. And I think that was a big eye opener for a lot of, again, the retailers in the inner circle when they took your training and that brand mm -hmm. kit that she's talking about is literally like, it's, I don't even know. I shouldn't say, I don't even know what the price is of the upgrade. It's not that much to upgrade to the pro no, Canva. And I mean, we're not here. There's a free version, but that pro that alone is worth it because all you do is upload your fonts, upload the four or five colors or six colors, whatever the same colors that you use over and over again. And it's so easy to use. Once you get there, I am that squirrel brain. I am that squirrel brain that my fonts, my graphics were all over the place. And we're just trying to streamline it right now. Well, we are streamlining it and we we've always had the right fonts and colors, but I haven't had the graphics um, and trying to use the same things. And we all know those brands that when we see them, like you just said, this, you know, we see those shops, you know, we're scrolling through our Instagram uh, and there's our brain sees it first, like you just said, and clear is kind. I think you said that in your training, clear is kind in your branding and in, in all of your messaging, just simple, easy to read yes. <laughs> graphics, not like 5,000 things. Like I can hear it in your voice about the, all the different <laughs> graphics. It's just messy looking. Uh, and it's better for our customers. They instantly know who yep. we are when they see our pretty colors. So that is a great, and I do, I think that brand kit is amazing. And it's been so helpful again, to so many retailers to think about that and to visually see that. And I encourage everybody to just, if you haven't, if you want to see it, I'll, I'll share my brand kit in the show notes. I'll share just a little uh, a screenshot of what my brand kit looks like. And it's simple. It's so easy to do. It's really uh, easy to do and important to have, I think. Uh, and you're absolutely right on that. And it has a side benefit as well in terms of making the experience of working in Canva feel less overwhelming because you can be easily distracted by all these different templates and fonts and so forth. If you just have these guardrails in place to know that you have a set of templates that you can use, you, can, you have a set of guidelines in terms of how to customize them, then you don't spend all this unnecessary time going down the rabbit hole of trying different font combinations. I mean, that could be fun. And if you want to do that in your spare time, just because you enjoy it, I'm not here to stop you, but I'm not here to stifle anybody's creativity. But as far as your business brand kit goes, that's not the place to start getting creative. You, you, like you said, clear is kind and you want to be kind to yourself as well as to your customers. 
Well, as we're uh, as we're recording this, we are getting ready for the holiday boot camp. So we are talking about getting ready for the holidays. Mm -hmm. And I am going to tell you, nobody has spare time. <laughs> There's not a retail listening no. that has spare time. Uh, we like to dabble and I work with a lot of creative souls. We're not self-employed shop owners without having like some kind of creative brain. Um, we are creative with our marketing. We're creative with our merchandising. We're creative with our inventory. Like, you know, all, like we just love all that stuff. You're right, though. It's not time to nobody has a whole lot of time to waste while we're sitting there staring at that blank screen. Like, what am I going to post or how am I going to post yeah. it? So these templates are amazing. And Canva has in its background or in its in its program um, built in templates. So I always say pick one and just go with it, <laughs> Like pick, you know, right. social media ones. Um, and not go with it, but like add, add it to your own. And I know that you shared how to do all of that inside our inner circle. And it's not a complicated thing. Just make it all your own. Take one template for social media, make it all your own. Can you speak a little bit to other things other than social media graphics? Because that is the first thing we all default to. Sure. I use Canva for social media. What are some other things and places that we can use Canva because it has grown and it is powerful. And I am blown away by some of the cool things that we can do on Canva now as small business owners, uh, especially as we're preparing, getting into the holidays. It's a busy time. I always encourage retailers to have as much of this stuff done in advance yeah. or as much as we can get done in advance, batch it, get it done. And then then you can just do your thing by selling your products in the during the holidays, but we don't want to be messing around with Canva. What are other assets that we can create using Canva for shop owners? Well, I would encourage, you know, everybody listening to do a little, not even a thought experiment, sit down, grab a, a pad of paper and a pen and think about what are all the touch points that you have with your customers. What are all the things they see when they come into your shop? What are all the things they see when they come in contact with you online? Where are all those potential places that you could be creating something that feels custom and customized to your branding and feels personalized? I have done, I do custom holiday cards each year. Uh, I've done custom cards for and little insert cards and little welcome packages for my clients who, for my my students who join my program, uh, you could might do something similar as thank you cards. There are various, there's so many templates around that as well, or you can create something custom in Canva. And I have been pretty lucky with their printing services. It, the price point's been pretty reasonable and it comes quickly as well. But again, don't leave this stuff to the last minute, plan it in advance <laughs> and get it done. So there's th those kinds of things. Think about the opportunities for sharing something in your shop. I mean, do you have any sort of signage that you want to put with your, with the various goods that they can buy in your store? Are there, is there some sort of just like an eight and a half by 11 kind of clear signage sort of opportunity that you'd be able to create something that again is very consistent with your branding and reemphasizes constantly that this is the look and feel of your brand. There's everybody's going to have their own set of needs. Obviously I'm not a shop owner. So what I use it to create is going mm -hmm. to be different, but it's a matter of sitting down and thinking, you know, what, what could I create? And you could spend a little bit of time just browsing through the template library in Canva to get some inspiration on the different ways that you could utilize the tool to create something that maybe you hadn't thought about creating before. Yeah. There's so many opportunities, newsletters, Facebook headers. I, I mean, yeah. I know that's social media, but it's just crazy. I have uh, a couple of clients who have just done exactly what you said. They're thinking of where, where do people see my touch points? You know, where are they? And sometimes retailers think about signage and signage can be really expensive to have like big logos and stuff created. Sure. But if you have your assets, you use your brand, you know, you've got your logo already and you're creating again in these templates, there's so many templates in there. Um, I've seen people create big poster board size signage for displays, for sales, that kind of thing, again, customized with the Canva. So it's, it is really a powerful thing. And in, in those cases, you can have those done Vista print or jukebox, any of those, you know, you can have yeah. anything printed if you can yep. upload it in a high quality, which is what I love about Canva. You can, you can upload in a high quality or just a low tiny JPEG, right? Like you can do anything, and which I, I mean, I find very powerful. Exactly. Yeah. And 
I would imagine those listening probably have your own resources as far as printing any sort of swag items. You're probably going Mm -hmm. to have stronger relationships in that way, but that's another place to consider it as well. I have Canva has sent me a, um, a hoodie that's got my Canva expert badge on it. I wear that thing all the time. I didn't think I would because I don't tend to wear branded branded um, clothing very often, but it is comfortable and it's personalized for me. And that's uh, it really has built that connection with them and that warm, fuzzy feelings towards them. So there's a lot of different opportunities to to do something that feels a little more custom that you might not have been, that might've been really cost prohibitive to do in the past. Right. And so things even like um, workbooks. So a lot of my clients have workshops, they do creative workshops or they teach or they, you know, Mm -hmm. have product knowledge sheets, that kind of thing. Again, guys, think about how you can customize that and make it beautiful. There's you know, fold outs and uh, uh, bag stuffers, everything can be done. I, I just think yeah. it's a really powerful thing that sometimes we think we kind of dismiss to just thinking it's, um, it's just thinking it's just social media. So uh, just don't want it to, to bring that up. So um, I also wanted to ask um, Brenda while we have her here so that we like to have practical information, um, some takeaways, I guess, for, for our retailers. What are some steps that some of us can take who have been playing around in Canva for a while and have a hot mess in the background. Um, Could you share a few steps that maybe we could take that we can do that are doable steps to help us get that side of things cleaned up because we are creative and we've been all over the place and we're creating all these fun things. So now what do we do? So here's the thing about getting organized in Canva. It's not complicated. They are easy steps. It just takes time and it takes carving carving out the the actual time on your calendar to do it, but also making sure you have the mental bandwidth to sit down and do it. So it is often something that you're going to want to do over a period of time in chunks. Get yourself a glass of wine or whatever you whatever you like to drink, put on some music, put on a show. You don't need a lot of um there's not a lot of thinking required to do this. It's pretty low level stuff, but it does take time. And it's one of those things we just push off because there's always something more important to do. The problem is if you continue to push off organizing, the important things that you need to do that you might need Canva to do are going to become more cumbersome, more time consuming, because you're going to spend a lot of time looking for components to create those materials that you could have saved if you had had an organized Canva account to begin with. So it's really just a simple five-step process that I teach. First, you are going to make sure you go through and delete the stuff you don't need. So the same way that if you were tackling a physical filing cabinet, you're not going to organize the stuff that you don't need to keep. So let's think of having a trash pile. Let's think of having like a reference or archive pile that you might need reference to, but you know, you don't really need it right now. And then you're going to have a keep pile. We want to get the trash out of there first. So we're not spending time on it that we don't need to be. And then you want to make sure you're, you can, and you can do this while you're going through things to purge it, or you can do it afterwards, go through and rename your designs so that they actually are explanatory and descriptive about what is in them. I will tell you that you know, the presentation that I did do for your members, it's a training that I give to a lot of different organizations. The title page on it looks identical. And if I had not, if I don't name all of those presentations specific to the organization that I'm giving it to, I would not be able to determine which one of those presentation design files is the right one unless I opened up every single one of them to scroll, to scroll through it because the contents are a little different, but from the outset, they all look identical. So making sure that you're naming all of your designs in a descriptive way, in a consistent way, so that should you go to search for them using the search field in Canva later, you'll be able to find them because they have appropriate keywords in them. And so if you are scanning the designs in your file, you can quickly determine which is the one that you're looking for. So we're going to delete and archive. We're going to then review and rename. Then you're going to sit down and do an inventory of what's left. And you're going to plan your folders. You're going to figure out. So if you, again, let's use the analogy of a physical filing system. You've got all these papers left on your desk. This is all the stuff that you still need to put away. How do they chunk down? 
you might have a folder there for your credit card statements. Maybe you have another folder for um, the mortgage on your house. You know, they're going to break down into different cat into different categories. You might, and then higher level, maybe the there's a file for the mortgage papers. There's another file for stuff to do with uh, house repairs that have been done. So the higher folder level on that is maybe home and automobile. So think about chunking down the content that is in your Canva account in the same way. You're going to want to figure out what is that hierarchy of folders that you might have to organize it. Once that's done, you're going to go create them. And the great thing is that Canva has now extended unlimited folders to the free plan as well. So even if you don't see enough merit in the brand kit to upgrade to pro and you want to stick around on the free plan for a while, you do still now have access to unlimited folders, which is great. So you can go and figure out what that folder structure is. You can plan it out. You can create all of your folders and then you can batch organize, uh, you know, check off multiple designs at one time and move them in one fell swoop into the appropriate folders. That can be a little confusing about how to do. So maybe one thing I will give you for the show notes is a little tip video I have on my YouTube channel about how to batch organize because it can be easy to miss that. Uh, there's a little trick to it. So that those are the five steps. They're not complicated. It's just not exciting work to do. <laughs> and I'm the first one to admit that. It is for me. I love it. I used to have a professional organizing business doing filing cabinets, but I know for most people, especially creatives, this is work that they will put off. So try to make time, you know, try to create as enjoyable an experience as possible. Binge whatever show you're loving on Netflix right now, get something to snack on and then just start chipping away at it. I had to do that. I will be the first to, I had assets like in my Canva account that were like, I mean, I've had Canva since it originally, well, probably like I was an early adapter 2013, I think. Yeah. And yeah. it's a really big hot mess. And there were things, and we also, um, my husband and I run three businesses. So, you know, we did. So there was like, oh my gosh, it was such a mess. So I actually followed Brenda's steps and I'm going to tell you, I'm the first to push that stuff off. And I've been following these steps and I did exactly that. I made joy from doing it and it felt good to get it done I've been working through it I'm still at the I'm still working on it um but I renamed and I deleted I've, I've done I've cleaned out the filing cabinet yeah. <laughs> I've created the folders and I've been renaming a lot of things and still ditching things uh I'm at that stage but it's already saving me so much time it's saving my team time because even right. like my team are in there and they're like this is a mess. Like it's so hard to, <laughs> well, it is, it's a hard, I mean, we, you know, we do our Instagram, uh, we, well, we'll do our podcast graphics and, you know, they were just all over the place and not always named the same, not always looking the same. So it needs, I mean, our graphics look the same, but our filing system didn't look the same. Yeah. So I want to urge anybody listening, if you're like me and you're like, Ugh, I don't want to do this, it will save you so much time. And to me, time, it's not just time, it's bandwidth and brain power. Cause now I just go click, 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 and I'm in done out. So before it was like, in yeah, what did I name that? Oh, where is it? <laughs> Find it. I know yeah. it's here someplace. Did I save that? I think I worked on that. <laughs> so ridiculous. I'm I'm being super honest here. I'm not generally a hot mess behind the scenes, so it's was kind of irritating to me. But that's how it's been. So I want to thank you for your steps and thank you for sharing those logical steps. And we'll have all of those broken down again in the show notes. And thank you for that video as well, too. Super great advice. It really is about saving time and brain power. And it's not just the time. I mean, making things easier for shop owners as, as we get into the holiday season, making things easier, making things lighter and making things um, so you don't have to think about them. To me, that's what yeah. Canva does. Like I like the brand kits there, the file folders are there now. It's just click, click, click in and out. Like I just said, it's it's so powerful to have that ability to do that. We couldn't do that years ago. Like when I first no. got in, we had to hire a designer or we just didn't have the ability to create. I mean, I create Facebook ads and it's amazing what we can do now. It's just and in adding video and motion. And I mean, I don't want people to go down a rabbit hole of all the no, different things. No. You don't have to do all the things, but you're right. I mean, there's a lot more that you can create now and even Canva itself. I mean, what it, it did start out as a graphic design tool right? Yeah, and was specifically being used to create 
Facebook and Instagram graphics, it, specifically, you know, social media kinds of images. And it has grown and evolved and turned into this significant communication tool in terms of, I mean, now you can exactly. create your presentations yeah. and use Canva to present and record and the video capabilities are growing constantly. But I think just don't let that overwhelm you either. Right. It, is, it has a lot, there's a lot of potential of what you can use it for, but even if you're using it just to create a few new things than you have been in the past, I think that's a great step forward. And I don't want anybody feeling like if they're not using every single feature that's available to them, that they <laughs> right. are not getting the benefit that, that they need to. So that's great advice. So as we wrap up, I want to honor your time and I appreciate you being here. And, um, do you, is there anything as we ask people to kind of come back if they faded away or they're, they're unpacking boxes or they're driving, whatever. One thing, one top, like the top thing you want retailers to know as they're taking information in here about Canva as they, that they can leave with, that would be really helpful. I mean, ultimately, once you have tackled your organization, I do think, and we spent a lot of time talking about the brand kit. I think that is one of the biggest shifts that you can make that will give the most positive outcome. If you just set up that brand kit, get it set up once. So it's always available to you. You've got all the logo variations available at your fingertips. You know what the colors are, you know what your fonts are. You're not having to chase them down every time. Just setting that up and then understanding that you need to use it consistently across everything. That is going to make a big difference for the quality of the graphics that you are creating and the quality of the various marketing materials that you're creating in Canva mm -hmm. um, in terms of the professionalism and just being able to create content that doesn't look amateurish. It really does have much more of a polished feeling. So if you take nothing else away, just understand the importance of that brand kit. And if you are on a free plan, I think one of the um, links I probably gave you for the show notes is I do, one of the perks I get as a Canva expert is an opportunity to do a 45 day free trial of the pro account rather than the 30 days that they give directly. So if anybody wants to dabble with it and try it out and see if the value really is there for them, that is available for them to try out without any cost. Yeah. The Canva Pro, uh, there's not many things that I say are no brainers, but that to me is one expense that yeah. I encourage retailers to, it's not to use. Expensive. No, and it's not, a, it's not big. And I wish I knew how much, but it's not that bad. And I know we're always watching every penny as retailers, but it's like, it's just really, it's worth it. So I just want to encourage you to try that free 45 day um uh, brand kit, like upgrade for 45 days. I think that's great. You can at least try it. So thanks so much. That is so awesome. Anything else you want to share with us before we wrap up? I think we covered a lot of it here. <laughs> yes. I mean, just that point of not being overwhelmed is, is so important and, you know, baby steps there, and there's lots of tutorials and tips and, and opportunities out there to get support. If you are running into challenges, using it, don't, don't, get frustrated, know that there's, you talked about the fact that you're going to be adding some templates, templates are your best friend. You don't have to design from scratch. There's a lot of stuff out there to give you a really solid, good head start on creating what you need. Just understand that, you know, there's some best practices to follow in terms of how you're customizing those items, but we've talked about that at length already. So yeah. I think folks are in good shape. And th thank you. That's great. We are mostly, you know, the listeners, the retailers listening are not, I, I hate saying one man band, you know, like we're, you know, solopreneurs with a team. Yeah. Usually we're not these big giant agencies or big giant stores with full on, you know, so this is so helpful to us to stay professional. Even us little guys can stay really professional and look like with consistency and I don't know. It's just helpful. It's helpful to, uh, this has been such a helpful uh, share the steps and everything that you've shared with us has been very helpful. Thank you, Brenda. So I appreciate that. Okay. How can people find you? Where, where's the best place for us to send people? Um, I mean, easiest ways you can either find me on my website. It's just brendacadman.com. But most of the time I send folks to our Facebook community. We have, I think we're over 7,500 folks now in there. It's just how, if you go to how to use canva.com, it'll forward you to the Facebook community. And then that's kind of where I share all the things. 
So. That's fantastic. I am in her group. I love that. I think it's really helpful. And Brenda has some great resources as well for everybody. And if you're a member of the Inner Circle, you can find her masterclass inside our masterclass section. Uh, and if you're not a member, jump on in if you need some more help, because it's a really great session. I, I will say it's been, it's been, there's been a lot of chatter around that. There's a lot of chatter going on after that uh, session. I'm glad and to continue. hear that. Yeah, it's been really great. So <laughs> thank you so much, Brenda. I appreciate you being here. We will have your contact information and everything in our show notes so that the retailers can find you and follow along and join that group because it is a great group of helpful tips in there as well too. So thank you, Brenda. Thanks for having me. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. We're so glad that you're here to join us this week and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes you can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me if i can support you in any way whatsoever please feel free to reach out make sure you join our rockstar creatives facebook group we will continue the conversation over there weekly so thanks for joining us please leave a review subscribe if you can and never miss an episode we hope to see you back here again again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.